Today we're taking a look at the new limited edition Mito Ocean Star GMT in collaboration with Hodinkee. I'm not sure why it took Hodinkee and a limited edition for this watch to finally come out in a 40 millimeter case. However, here we are. They probably should have done this from the beginning alongside the 44 millimeter version to satisfy more risks, but it took Hodinkee to get them to this point and I'm happy they did. I ordered this watch immediately when I saw it because I sold my Ocean Star Tribute. One of the best dive watches, hands down in my opinion, that the Swatch Group make. So today we're gonna take a look at a watch that is actually very similar to that Ocean Star Tribute. It is the 40 millimeter version of the Ocean Star GMT. So when I saw this watch, I immediately purchased it. It was really a no brainer for me. There's a few different reasons why. One reason is because I recently sold my Ocean Star Tribute, a watch that I absolutely loved and immediately regretted selling when I sold it and did that to fund another watch. And I really regretted I should have kept that watch. When this came up, it sort of gave me an opportunity to get something a little bit different rather than just rebuying that watch, which it was about to do. So. This gave me an opportunity to get something a little bit different from that watch and actually a little bit more special in my opinion. This is the new Mito Ocean Star Tribute GMT limited edition with Hodinkee and it comes in a really nice package. So you're getting two straps, a leather strap and a nylon strap. You also get a mesh bracelet on it and it is a GMT. So you're getting a Powermatic 80 GMT movement inside. It is the same case as that Tribute, or essentially the same case. There are a few key differences, uh, actually one key difference, this has brushing, while that Ocean Star Tribute does not. That was probably one of my biggest complaints about that watch. It didn't have any brushing on it. It was a fingerprint magnet and obviously very, very shiny. And here is the watch. You can see there is a lot of inspiration from that Ocean Star Tribute. Specifically, when you turn it on its side, you can see that essentially it's the same case, except you are now getting brushing. There is still polishing. You have polished edges on the case. It looks really good and is actually very well done. You have a very similar crown. It's almost the exact same crown. Exact same bezel as well. The insert is very similar in style. Uh, obviously, it is a 24 hour bezel and you have a red triangle with a pip. It is also bi-directional. It is fully polished, so it's pretty hard for me to grip because I have dry hands. You have that domed boxed sapphire crystal when you turn it on its side, very vintage looking. This is inspired by a vintage Mito GMT. So I think they did a good job at sort of getting the details right on this. It's 40.5 millimeters. So essentially the exact same size as that Mito Ocean Star Tribute uh, that I very much regret selling. The dial here is a matte black dial, except you do get applied indices on here. Whereas on the Ocean Star Tribute, you got printed on indices. So hopefully the loom is a little bit better on this watch. You have a chapter ring. The chapter ring is a 60 second scale. Then inboard of that, you have a little bit of a white minute track, I guess you would call it a railroad track. That is in sort of a creamy white color. The indices are sort of applied on there. And then uh, you have some loom in those. That's like a cream colored loom. The hands on here, sort of a dagger hand for the hour hand, a fence post hand for the minutes hand. And then you have an arrow without a tip for the seconds hand, no loom on that but there is loom in the hour and minutes hand. Matte black dial, Mito automatic at the top of the dial, at the bottom of the dial, right above the six o'clock index. It just says Ocean Star GMT. This is a GMT powered by the Powermatic 80. That means you get 80 hours of power reserve. Also, this is a flyer GMT. At least that's what Hodinkee call it, a traveler's GMT. Some people call it a true GMT. That means it's the local hour hand that skips. I'll show you that functionality in just a few seconds. You get a red arrow GMT hand that also has loom. Uh, crown, very big and grippy, very easy to unscrew and use. Uh, when you unscrew the crown, you do get 200 meters of water resistance, screwed in case back as well, screwed in crown. So 
Uh, obviously, you can use this pretty much day to day. There you go. That's it. That's the functionality. The local hour hand skips, pull it all the way out. And then of course you could adjust the time. It does hack. That's really it. And then right there, you get a date. The date is black color match, although it does cross over into that minute track. So it does cut off that minute track just a little bit. Visually, not that bad. It sort of replaces the index there, but nothing too bad. Uh, probably the only complaint that I have. I would prefer no date, but this is a GMT, so I kind of think you need a date. Uh, you may not want the date at all. A lot of people are like that. But here it is, the bracelet. Uh, it just says Mito right here again in that vintage script. I'll do a close up so you can see what I'm talking about. Not the best bracelet, but not bad, not terrible. Uh, I just don't like mesh bracelets for a few different reasons. One of the main reasons is that they don't taper. Uh, and I like a bracelet that tapers, so uh, unfortunately you can't do that, but you can get a really good fit with a mesh bracelet, so that's good. Case back just basically says, you know, it's a limited edition of 999 from Hodinkee and, and Mido. Um, you have a little uh, starfish on here. It is screwed in, uh, 200 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, all that good stuff. It just gives you information, it says Mido again, right there in that script. And it's the only place that it actually says Hodinkee on the watch. I'm actually very happy about that because, you know, I don't want it to say Hodinkee on the front of the watch and it doesn't. So that is a good thing to me. Uh, anyway, let me quickly do measurements for you. Uh, like I said, this is a 40.5 millimeter watch. So 40.4, uh, depending on how you actually grab it, but it is a 40 0.5 millimeter watch is basically what they even say on their website. Uh, thickness on here is around 13 millimeters thick, 13.5 millimeters, but that's including the very domed box sapphire crystal. Uh, 6.8 millimeters at the crown, so you get a very large crown. All of these measurements are very similar to what you get from the Ocean Star Tribute. I think it's a little bit thinner than this because it has a GMT movement. It's a little bit thicker, but the lug to lug basically the same at 46.6 millimeters. The strap, I believe, is 20 millimeters. It should be 20 millimeters. I don't think it's 21, but it might be 21 like the Ocean Star Tribute. It is. Well, that's unfortunate, but that's the uh, that's the way that Mito do it. And a lot of Swatch Group's products, they like to put 21 millimeter lug spans. Uh, lug widths, excuse me, and that's what they've done here. Unfortunate that they did that, but there you go. Uh, this is, uh, I think, $1,390. I don't think I know I actually purchased it, so that's what I paid. Do I think it's worth that money? Yes, I think it is worth that money, in my opinion, uh, because I know that the Mito Ocean Star Tribute is a fabulous watch. Uh, I know this will be a pretty incredible watch as well. The only problem with this watch, like I said, is the bracelet. I wish that they gave you the option for a, um, a molded end link bracelet rather than a mesh bracelet with straight links. I, uh, with a straight end link, I just wish that you had sort of an oyster style bracelet option or maybe a brushed version of what you get from the Tribute, which I think is a fabulous, really well-constructed bracelet. But uh, they didn't choose to do that and that is unfortunate. So anyway, uh, very quickly, let me show you the watch that I have on my wrist. This is a watch that I actually uh, compared the Ocean Star Tribute to. This is my Omega Seamaster 300 1957 reissue. This is a limited edition as well. And I compared those two watches because I thought that the quality of the Ocean Star Tribute was so close to the Omega. It was really impressive. I, I you know, like I said, I do regret selling that watch because I, you know, I just did it to fund, fund another watch and that happens. So the other, the other problem that I have with mesh bracelets is that getting them on is a little bit of a pain, but you know, you have to get used to it, but there you go. So you can see it's, it's very secure, but it's just not the best. I do wish it tapers as well. There you go. 40.5 millimeters on my seven and a half inch wrist. This is a good looking watch. It really is a good looking watch. I think they did a great job with the overall design, uh, the vintage aesthetic. I think that the Tribute's a great watch. This obviously, um, you know, just takes it up a little bit of a notch, I guess you would say. 
that's it. You still get the Powermatic 80 functionality, 80 hours of power reserve, but you also have the GMT and you get 200 meters of water resistance. So why not? Really awesome. I'll throw some pictures of it on the leather strap as well. Uh, the nylon strap, which looks pretty good as well. Um, I have no idea if they are any good, but we will uh, we'll throw them on there and have you guys take a look. Anyway, uh, very quickly, I'm going to do a loom shot because the loom on here hopefully is better than what you got from the Tribute. Well, there you go. I mean, Hodinkee maybe said put more loom on it. I don't know. Maybe because there are applied indices, the loom is better. The loom on the hands, pretty similar, but the loom on the indices, obviously better. And then you have a nice loom pip here. Decent, not bad. A lot better than what you got on that Tribute, which was abysmal. Like, very, very bad. This is a lot better. In fact, when I got that watch, I was like, is this a fake watch? Because I was <laughs> I was a little concerned because I, I was like, there's no way that the Swatch Group would put out a watch with such bad loom. But you can see this is actually fading pretty quickly as well. So not the best, but better still than what you got from that uh, Ocean Star Tribute with printed loom. Listen, I have to say that Mito should have come out with a 40 millimeter version of this watch a long time ago. Uh, obviously, they're using a case that they kind of already have. I don't know why they didn't do this before. Why did it take Hodinkee to do a limited edition with them to make this in a 40 millimeter version? Every time I did a video, every time I talked about the Ocean Star GMT, people were begging in the comments for Mito to come out with a 40 millimeter version. And here it is, even a 42 millimeter version people were begging for. And it took this, I, you know, I don't really get it, but hey, they did it finally. I think it's a really good looking watch. Obviously it needs better loom, but other than that, I really don't have many complaints about this watch. I never had really that many complaints about the Ocean Star Tribute. Um, because I thought it was just a fantastic looking watch and the overall quality of the watch was excellent. Uh, again, the same complaint is the loom. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of this watch? What do you think of the Ocean Star Tribute? What do you think of the limited edition that Hodinkee had to get involved in to make a 40 millimeter version of that GMT, which a lot of people love and Unfortunately, they never came out with it. Now, here it is. What do you think of it? Loom is all but faded. So Loom isn't much better on this watch than it is on uh, previous versions of the Tribute, but unfortunate. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel, and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links. In the description, those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.